Well, good morning, everyone. This is August Rosado with Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. Thank you so much for tuning in on this Thursday morning. And of course, it is June the 21st. It is the first day of summer, the official first day of summer. And it is great to have all of you with us today on this beautiful, warm Thursday morning coming to you from Lincoln, Rhode Island. And so it is uh, great to have all of you in the room with us today as we once again open the word of God and as we look at a geopolitical activity going on in the world in light of biblical prophecy as I will give you a prophetic perspective, a plain sense interpretation of that geopolitical event. And I know that many of you are coming into the room, even though we're about 12 minutes late or so. Great to see Deborah Wyatt and uh, Anthony Parker is with us. We have Lenny Medeiros. Now, here's a guy we have not seen in a while. Good to see Lenny Medeiros uh, in the room. We go all the way back, Lenny and I, from the days of New Hope there in Swansea, Massachusetts. So it's great to see Lenny. And we have Jeanette Heplin. And she has been a longtime follower of our ministry and a supporter of our ministry, as well as Deborah Wyatt, and a supporter of our ministry. We appreciate them, and we appreciate their fellowship, their friendship, and their support. And, of course, we also have Ivana uh, Jerk Jerkic. It's great to have her. With us today. I hope I got your last name right. If I didn't, I apologize. But Ivana, great to have you in the room with us today. Well, of course, I'm excited about today's study as I am I am about every lesson that we do. And we're going to be looking at the Jewish calendar and Bible prophecy. Of course, uh, our friend, my buddy Dave Florio out of Coventry, Rhode Island is also uh, watching. Great to see you, Dave. And uh, Jeanette Eplin says she is home this morning so she can watch the program. So what a blessing that is. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. And I hope and pray that you have your Bibles open and that you have a pen, notepad, take down some notes, if you miss something, I'm going to upload this live video to the archive on our Facebook page so that you can go back and uh, watch it again. Pause it, fast forward, rewind, do what you need to do. And then we're going to upload these same videos to YouTube. Now, you know, I know I, I criticize YouTube a lot. Not YouTube itself, but the content that's on YouTube, especially the uh, the abuse of Bible prophecy, the uh, excessive abuse of the study of Bible prophecy. As my friend Dr. Dave Reagan would say, it can be a blessing for those who study it, or it's plain sense interpretation, or it could be a field for fanatics who misinterpret the subject. And unfortunately, a lot of prophecy fanatics are out there today. They're all over YouTube claiming they found the Ark of the Covenant, what they did, why didn't they bring it out and show it to the world? Why don't they show us pictures of it, videos of it? You know, they claim they found the Ark of the Covenant, or they claim that they know somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody that saw it. Uh, you know, and then all, all this wild, eschatological, sensational claims on YouTube of modern-day Nepalese and, and all this nonsense that is being propagated out there among those who say that they're Bible prophecy teachers. And that is the reason why Bible prophecy, the study of it, has gotten a, very, a, a really bad reputation. It's gotten a bad reputation, 
it has become a major turnoff to a lot of people simply because we abuse the subject. And we end up abusing the subject when we dramatize and sensationalize. And we shouldn't be doing that, guys. Take the subject of Bible prophecy and study it for its plain sense interpretation. And you know, I have been doing that since I, my day one of studying Bible prophecy. And those of you that know me, you know that I don't engage in that stuff, nor will I associate with others who do. I've been invited to prophecy conferences in the past where I finally had to say no, no more. I will not take conferences where there are multiple speakers. Uh, I've seen a disaster that, that came out of that. And uh, other prophecy teachers out there who just are way out in right field, man. So we've got to be careful, guys. You're going to study Bible prophecy. You study it for its plain sense interpretation. Robin Fraser, great to see you. Hope you're doing well. And Dave uh, Vanderbilt, good to see you today, buddy. We also have Carly uh, Alpema, Stephen McSmith, Ryan Alexander. Great to have all of you with us today for our Bible prophecy update. Again, I come to you Tuesday through Friday. 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, on Friday, tomorrow, we're going to have Friday Prophecy Q&A. That means this is your opportunity to ask me a Bible prophecy question. You, all, you guys put me on the hot seat um, every Friday morning for Friday Prophecy Q&A. So... Have your Bible prophecy questions ready for tomorrow. I mean, you can also ask one today. You're not limited to just Fridays. But if you want to wait till Friday, join us in the room Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also have Judy Varble the Young, the wife of Dr. Jimmy the Young. Prophecy today, and they are watching. I know Judy, uh, uh, you and your husband Jimmy were are in South Dakota. I was just in South Dakota. I did a seven-day Bible prophecy conference in Millbank, South Dakota, and that was um, a Sunday through Sunday. Those guys put me to work when I go up there. A Sunday through Sunday Bible prophecy conference with only one day off on Saturday. So they had me preaching Sunday, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, gave us Saturday off to recuperate, and then went at it again the following Sunday. Millbank Baptist Church in Millbank, South Dakota. My wife and I just got back a couple of days ago from Millbank, South Dakota, and uh, we're back home in Rhode Island. This Sunday, I am going to be preaching at Adams Square Baptist Church. Adams Square Baptist Church is in Worcester, Massachusetts. I will be preaching all day there on Israel Bible prophecy and current events. So I will be there at Adams Square Baptist Church in Worcester, Massachusetts. So if you live in that area, Auburn, or any of those surrounding areas, come on up. If you don't have a place to go on Sunday, come and join us. Adams Square Baptist Church where I'll be preaching Sunday school, Sunday morning, and the Sunday evening service on Bible prophecy, the plain sense interpretation of Bible prophecy, teaching you and preaching to you Bible prophecy for its grammatical, historical, contextual, and literal interpretation. And so come on out this Sunday, Adam Square Baptist Church, in Worcester, Massachusetts. And so uh, getting back to Dr. Jimmy DeYoung, uh, Dr. DeYoung, uh, he's, he's been a teacher of mine for years. I think I started following 
from you. I got saved in 1988 and immediately began my studies in Bible prophecy after a pastor friend of mine who led my wife to the Lord back in 1988. I got saved uh, while I was at work uh, at an animal shelter. That's where I worked when I first got saved, April 22nd, 1988. And um, the pastor came over our house and led my wife to the Lord and married us. And then it was that same pastor who took me to a Jewish synagogue in New Bedford, Massachusetts, where I was born, on Brownell Avenue, and uh, took me there, sat me down, and he said, just listen as I talk to the, the rabbi and, you know, the Jewish people. He started sharing all these messianic prophecies uh, with them, telling me that Israel uh, is God's chosen people, the apple of his eye. God is not done with Israel. Replacement theology is a fallacy. Teaching me all these things, and the Holy Spirit just, just put something inside me. And I said to myself, I've got to study this subject called Bible prophecy, eschatology. And for um, a little over 30 years now, I've been studying Bible prophecy, being on the good, solid Bible prophecy teachers like Dr. Jim. And of course, Jimmy is heard all across the United States every Saturday at 1.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Prophecy Today. And if you know, I mean, let me tell you something. There are some bad prophecy teachers out there. I'm just going to say that straight up. There are some bad prophecy teachers out there. And I know that all of us, even with good prophecy teachers, we're not all going to agree on everything. Okay? That's just a given. That's just human nature. Okay? Dr. Jimmy DeYoung will teach you some good, solid eschatology. And I, he's just only one of a few, a very remote few, uh, that I would recommend as good, solid Bible prophecy teachers. And he's been my teacher for many, many years. He even has a school called School of Prophets. You might want to check that out by going to their website. I know I don't, you know, endorse, honestly not endorse, it's a bad term for me to use, but I don't of other people's websites on here, but I wrote for Dr. DeYoung, prophecytoday.com, and if you want to get involved in a school of prophets, uh, you can do exactly that. Uh, you can do it through home correspondence, you can do it through actually going there. I've been to, I've been to uh, his school uh, a few times, and uh, I know I haven't been going there because my schedule is just absolutely crazy. My speaking schedule, Israel trips, but I know I need to get back into it down the road sometime down the road, but um, I think that's something you might want to check out. So, there's a plug for you, Dr. J. But, um, other than that, this Sunday I'm preaching at Adam Square Baptist Church. And then Monday, um, this Monday, my wife and I leave for Israel. Just my wife and I. Uh, no tour groups. Not on anyone's schedule. My wife and I are leaving for the Holy Land, her and I. Before I go on there, let me see Kenneth Avery. Great to see you, brother. Pastor Rafaklat Sadiq is with us. Anders Ekman, our dear brother from Sweden, is going to be in Israel at the same time I am, and I'm hoping that you and I can hook up while we're out there. Uh, Candy and Paul Swihart, Hope Biggs, and her husband, Pastor Brian Biggs is in the room. And uh, Brian Biggs was, is the pastor of Real Bank Baptist Church in Real Bank, South Dakota. And we had a wonderful time with Brother Biggs, his wife, Hope, who's great with child right now. Their sons, Shmuel, Yosia, and Benjamin. And I'm saying their Hebrew names. Uh, Samuel, Josiah, and Benjamin. And then, of course, Hope Sister Faith. We just had a wonderful time with them. The fellowship and the belly ship. Boy, they were feeding us, feeding us a lot over there. And, um, but I just want to say that I want to thank Pastor Bakes and his church for raising the funds for us to cover the cost for this trip to Israel. Now, um, it was, you know, a good chunk of change, and we appreciate that. Uh, but we still need the support, guys. My wife and I are going to Israel on Monday. 
morning for 10 days. We're going to Israel to go soul winning, as we do all the time when we're in Israel. Right over here to my right, you can't see it, is a case of complete Hebrew Bibles. And on the front of those Hebrew Bibles, saying Hebrew, Evit, that's how you say Hebrew in Hebrew, Evit. Torah Nebi Im Ketuvim Beri Hadashah. The law, the prophets, the writings, and the New Covenant or the New Testament. One complete book. The Hebrew Bible. And we're going to walk into malls, into stores, wherever the Holy Spirit opens the door. And we're going to go one-on-one -on -one with the Jewish people. I do that at least um, two times a year with Dr. Todd Baker of uh, Barit Padishah Ministries. He is a missionary to the Jewish people. Him and I go to Israel. Uh, I go with him twice a year to evangelize the Jews out there. And then another time, I take a tour group out there in March in the spring. And if you'd like to come with us next year, March 2019, love to have you join us on our Bible prophecy tour. <clears throat> and then my wife and I go by ourselves at least once a year. So I'm in Israel at least four times a year. And so we're going out there, not to lay on the beach and overlook the Mediterranean, not to lounge out somewhere in a hotel in Caesarea. We are going to Israel to share the gospel. And I'm going to be shooting some video out there, teaching Bible prophecy on location. Like one of the areas I want to go to is a place called Shiloh. You say Shiloh, but really it's pronounced properly in Israel, Shiloh. <clears throat> I'm going to be doing a video shoot there in Shiloh, in Bethel, where Jacob uh, went to Bethel and he saw the angels ascending, ascending and descending upon the ladder. I'm going to be doing a teaching there. We're going to be doing some teaching up in the Galilee. My wife and I have rented apartments in, uh, in Natalia. Uh, Tiberias, and finally in Jerusalem. We're not going to be in hotels. We'll be, we are rented apartments out there. And we got a really good deal on these apartments through a, a website called Airbnb. And so um, it's all set in stone. Bibles are ready, complete Hebrew Bibles. Backpacks ready to go. We're ready to go. Lord willing. So we appreciate the people of Millbank Baptist Church, Pastor Brian Wiggs, and uh, uh, their people, and they're such giving people over there. They raise the funds um, to help cover some of the cost of this trip. But we continue to need your support, ladies and gentlemen, for, you know, we're going to be renting a car out there. Gas is very expensive in Israel and for food out there. So if you can help us out with that, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. You can do that by going to my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Sign up for our newsletters while you are there, but then scroll down to the bottom of the page. The donate button's right there at the very bottom of the web page. TodayInBibleProphecy.org. Click that donate button and put whatever amount the Lord lays on your heart. No gift too big or too small, ladies and gentlemen. And by you giving toward this Israel outreach, you are having a direct hand in helping us share the gospel come June 25th to the Jewish people. So please prayerfully consider jumping on board and helping us with that. Remember what Paul the Apostle, a, a, a born-again Orthodox Jewish rabbi, said in Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Yes, the Jewish people need to be saved and contrary to what John Hagee says, since he believes in this 
nonsense of dual covenant theology. That is false doctrine. Jews need Jesus. Gentiles need Jesus. There's not two salvations, as Hagee promotes. There's only one salvation. There's one salvation for the Jew, and there is one salvation for the Gentile, and that is through the Lord Jesus. There are not two salvations. One salvation for the Jew outside of Jesus by keeping the law, and they're being physical descendants of Abraham, and another salvation for the Gentiles in Jesus. No, there's one salvation. Paul said in Romans 3.19, but we have concluded that both Jew and Gentile are all under sin. And if both Jew and Gentile are under sin, then that means both Jew and Gentile need a Savior. And there's only one Savior, and salvation only comes through him. And that is through Yeshua. That is through the Lord Jesus. This is the message will be taken to Israel. So if you can help us out with that, that would be greatly appreciated. We'll be giving you live updates, as I'm doing now on Facebook. We're going to be giving you live updates from Israel for our prophecy updates. And let you know what's going on, the Bible that the Bibles that were passed out, conversations that we've been having. We'll be giving you live updates from the Holy Land. My wife and I are leaving June 25th, coming back on July the 3rd. Please keep those dates in your prayers, and please pray for us. As we leave for Israel, come this Monday. We are so excited about that. You know, if we get raptured in Israel, that's only going to be a domestic flight for us. But I'm just being facetious. But other than that, we're going to Israel. I'll be back in Israel in October. With Dr. Todd Baker for another Jewish evangelistic outreach in the Holy Land. And then I'll be back in Israel in December with Dr. Baker again for another Jewish outreach. So we're excited. Looking forward to it. Man, go to Israel four times a year. And that I'm I'm just humbled by that. What a blessing it is. So I'm looking forward to it. We need your support, ladies and gentlemen. Please help support us. And when you visit my website, todaybibleprophecy.org, go to our store. Go to my brand new book, Looking for the Promise of the Blessed Hope, Why You Can Still Believe in the Doctrine of the Rapture. The, the doctrine of the rapture is being, it's, it's under attack today by those who live the church. Go figure. And the doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture is under aggressive attack. And we're throwing out the baby with the bathwater in the church. That's the reason why I wrote that book. To uh, help solidify your belief that the rapture is a biblical doctrine. And that we believe the pre-tribulation rapture is the biblical view. And that Jesus is still coming again. I also wrote a book back in September of 2017 called Bible Eschatology, and the subtitle, Looking at Geopolitical Events in Light of Biblical Prophecy, just like we do every day on the show. You can also order that book as I take a current uh, geopolitical event and then give you a plain sense biblical interpretation on that event, a, a prophetic perspective, if you will. And so you can order that book. And you can, and by the way, if you want to order both books, we can give you a deal on that. But you can't find that deal on the website. You would have to uh, send us an email, august.todayinbibleprophecy.gmail.com. Let me know that you want both books. They're $15 each, but we can give you a deal if you order two of them. And give you a deal on the shipping, and then send that out. You can uh, leave your phone number with your email, and we'll get back to you. For international orders, uh, again, you would have to uh, pay double the shipping on it. And so I know that these books will be a blessing to you, as well as Holy Land gifts that we have on our website that we bring back from Israel. 
available on, on our website. 2,000-year-old widow mite coins, all these things are available. They're real, genuine 2,000-year-old widow mite coins from the Holy Land. So you might want to take advantage of that. You can mail your donation or any support to Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries, 55 Pleasant Street, Apartment 2, Lincoln, Rhode Island, 02865. I want you to take your Bibles and go with me to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. I know that this is a very familiar passage to all of you. 2 Peter 3, 3 and 4. Chapter 3 talks about living in the hope of the Lord's coming. Well, we know that there are two phases of that coming. The first phase will be the rapture of the church. That will be before the tribulation period. And the second phase will be the revelation for the second coming of Jesus back to the earth at the end of the seven year period of tribulation. And we know when you use alliteration, there'll be the rapture, return, and then the retribution. The rapture, that's for the church. The revelation, he's coming back with his church. Retribution is for the nations that are in rebellion against him right now and who will make war with him. That is second coming. Jesus will dish out retribution. <laughs> so Second Peter 3, it's talking about living in the hope of the Lord's coming. Well, the blessed hope. But in verses 3 and 4, Peter says this. Knowing this first, that they shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? But since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. That's exactly what we are seeing right now. And folks, I gotta tell you this, it's a very disturbing trend that is happening in the church. The last days began with the birth of the Lord Jesus 2,000 years ago and will end at the rapture of the church when the Lord will call his bride to meet him in the air. The rapture will conclude the church age since Pentecost up until now. There have been 2,000 years of church age history. That church age will conclude when the Lord calls his bride out of the world. The last days that we're in now will then turn to the end time. The end times, that will include the tribulation period, the second coming, Armageddon, the 1,000 year millennial reign, which is literal and bodily and physical. But then that concludes at the great white throne judgment. So we're in the last days right now. And in the last days, Many will deny the Lord's soon return. Peter warns that the church age, that as the church age draws to a close, there will be scoffers. Now, these scoffers are literally mockers. And these mockers, they will ridicule the promise of the Lord's return at the rapture. Unfortunately, most of the mockery is taking place in the church. Not really by unbelievers, but unfortunately by those who are either believers or profess Christianity. They are the ones that are mocking the promise of the blessed hope. They are the ones that are mocking the Lord's soon return. Peter further states, that the denial of Jesus' soon return will be based on straw man arg arguments. Based on arguments of the, well, the supposedly unchanging process since creation. 
In other words, nothing has changed. Jesus has not returned. What else is new? That is the attitude. It's been 2,000 years since he made that promise. And since creation up until now, it's the same old status quo. Violence continues. Sodomy continues. Murders continue. Wars continue. Rumors of war are bound. What else is new? Jesus has not returned yet, so that means he's not going to return. Peter hit it right on the nose, because that's exactly what we see going on today. What these markers uh, fail to take into account is that the people of Noah's day had the same attitude before the judgment of the flood which was not a local flood. It was a universal, global, worldwide flood. Patty and I, my wife, was just at the Ark Encounter in uh, Williamstown, Kentucky. I figured while I was out there preaching at some churches, let's just see what all the hype is about. So we went to the Ark Encounter, and I got to admit, guys, I was pretty impressed to see this 450-foot-long Ark 75 feet tall, 45 feet wide, with three decks. And it will take you at least three hours to go through that arc. I mean, it is, it's, it's really impressive, to say the least. But the people of Noah's day had the same attitude before the judgment of the flood. It was everyday life. They were drinking, they were eating, they were marrying, they were given in marriage. They had no idea. That judgment was right around the corner. And that judgment fell in the form of a global flood. The beginning of the creation that Peter the Apostle speaks of. Well, that takes us back, folks, to Genesis 1 and verse number 1. In Hebrew, Bereshit bara Elohim via Hashemim via Haaretz. In the beginning, Bereshit, in the beginning. God, Elohim, created, that's creation that Peter talks about, created the heaven and the earth. Now, we see in Genesis 1, I love how Dr. Jim DeYoung puts it together. We see in Genesis 1, creation. Uh, Genesis 2, the special effects of creation. Uh, chapter 3, the fall of man. Chapter 4, Cain and Abel. Chapter 5, the genealogy of Seth. Chapter 6, 7, and 8, Noah and the flood. Chapter 9, Noah after the flood. Chapter 10, another genealogy, the table of nations. Chapter 11, the Tower of Babel. And chapter 12, the call of Abram from Ur of the Chaldees. And the beginning of the Jewish race. Because for the first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis, you have the first strand of the human family, the Goyim, Gentiles, Genesis chapters 1 through 11. Then we get to Genesis chapter 12, the second strand of the human family comes into existence. This would be the Jewish people, the people of Shem. The Jews are Semites, they come from Shem, Jacob's son. That's why we have in this order Shem. Ham, Japheth. Well, Shem wasn't the firstborn. Japheth was the firstborn. Shem was the second oldest. But Shem is mentioned first. Because the Jewish people, the chosen people of God, the apple of his eye would come from Shem. That's the reason why we use the phrase today, anti-Semitism. We eliminate the H. And we say anti-Sem instead of Shem anti-Semitism. People who have a problem with Jews. People who hate the Jews like Roger Waters, the former front band from the rock band Pink Floyd, is a virulent anti-Semite. And many like them out there today. Louis Farrakhan from the Nation of Islam, wicked individual, who's an anti-Semite, who calls the Jews demons every single day. 
So in Genesis 12, the second span of the human family, the people of Shem, the Jewish people. And then when we get to Acts chapter 2, the third strand of the human family comes into existence. This would be the church. So those are the three strands of the human family. Gentiles, Jews, church of God. God has a plan for the Gentile nations in the future. God has a plan for Israel, the Jewish people in the future. God has a plan for the church in the future. When we read the book of Ezekiel, it's God's program for the Jewish people. In the future, when we, we read the book of Daniel, God's future program for the Gentile nations. And when we read the book of Revelation, God's program for the church. That is how God divides the human race into those three family strands. Remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 32? Give none offense to the Jew, Gentile, church of God. That is how God divides a human family into threes. So for the first um, 11 chapters of the book of Genesis, uh, uh, Genesis, but Genesis, we see at least 2,000 years of human history. Now we see the, we see the word day early on in the book of Genesis. Now the Hebrew word for day is Yom, Y-O-M, Yom. That is the Hebrew word for day, and it was divided into two periods, the evening and the morning. On the Jewish calendar, the Jewish day begins at sundown, and it ends at sundown, say from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. That is the Jewish day of reckoning, whereas our day begins at midnight, and it ends at midnight but not for the Jewish people. You see in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5, the evening and the morning were the first day. Yom Echad, the evening and the morning were the first day. We see this, uh, for example, in Genesis 1 8. The evening and the morning were the second day. Uh, verse 13, the evening and the morning were the third day. Uh, verse um, Verse number 19, the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Verse 23, the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Verse 31, the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Yom Echad, that's the Jewish time period for their day. It begins at sundown and it ends at sundown. Jesus confirms that there are 12 hours in the day, according to what he said, in John chapter 11 and verse number 9. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at a literal 24-hour-a-day, six-day period of creation. The rabbis and the early church fathers uh, believed that they were in harmony on this. Don't let the evolutionists lie to you, or don't even let the, the theists lie to you. Theistic evolution. And which, by the way, is being embraced by a lot of Christians today. They say God uh, began the initial act of creation, but then he backed off and he allowed evolution to take over the process. That's right from the pits of hell. God was involved in all six days of creation. Six literal 24-hour day periods. And they, they teach you that. When you go to the Ark Encounter, you know, uh, produced or founded by Ken Ham there uh, in Williamstown, Pennsylvania. You're going to go and check this place out. From creation to Abraham is at least 2,000 years for Abram. From Abram to the time of Jesus the Messiah is at least 2,000 years. And from Jesus the Messiah to our generation today is at least or almost. 2,000 years. So we are looking at almost 6,000 years despite a discrepancy on the Jewish lunar calendar. And, and we know that the Jewish lunar calendar is based on the moon. It's a 360-day year with some 29, 30-day months. Now the rabbis tell us 
And we are in the Jewish year 5778. They believed that 5,778 years ago was creation. Now, we have a Gregorian solar calendar that's based on the sun. We say that we're in the year 2018. The rabbis say we're in the year 5778. Our calendar says Anu Domini. Which is Latin. We are in the year of our Lord, 2018. But we know that there is at least a 222 year discrepancy on the Jewish calendar. It's not 6,000 years, it's 5,778. 57, 78. So we have a 222 year discrepancy. Why the discrepancy is really. Not a clear answer, but I'll throw a few things at you. Now, and I'll get to that in just a moment. According to the Orthodox Jewish website, Chabad.org, the Talmud states that the world will go on for at least 6,000 years, with the seventh being a millennial year of rest. The rabbis say that there will be a global Shabbat, a global Sabbath for the world, in the Messianic era. We call this the Davidic Theocratic Kingdom to come or the Millennial Kingdom. Now that's talked about in Revelation 20, 2 through 7, where it tells us six times that Jesus will reign for a thousand years. And again, people in the church say, oh, the word millennium is not biblical, and the word's not found in the Bible. Why do you use the word millennium? Well, it comes from two Latin words. Malay, thousands, anam, years. So when you combine those two Latin words, Malay, anam, millennium, what do you get? A thousand years. And we find that phrase, thousand years, six times in Revelation chapter 20 between verses uh, 2 through 7. So it is biblical. If Christians would only do their homework on this, you know, they, they wouldn't be so confused as to why we use these terms like rapture, millennium. You know, we, we believe in the Bible, but the word Bible is not found in the Bible. We support missions. That word's not found in the Bible. We support missionaries. That word's not found in the Bible. We believe in demons. That word's not found in the Bible. We believe in Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's not found in the Bible. But all because these words are not found in the Bible does not mean the doctrine is not there. The rabbis believe the Messiah would come during the discrepancy period, the 222-year discrepancy on the Jewish lunar calendar. So they believe that during that 222-year uh, period prior to the 6,000 years, they believe the deadline is at least 6,000 years. The deadline for the arrival of the Messiah. Well, of course, the Messiah came 2,000 years ago. They missed it. They dropped the ball. Again, they believe that the deadline for the coming of the Mashiach, the coming of the Messiah, is 6,000 years from creation. Again, there is no clear answer for the 222-year discrepancy on the Jewish lunar calendar. So I know that their calendar is a bit more accurate than our calendar, but you have, you have discrepancies on both sides of the calendar. Uh, some say the, the 223 year discrepancy is based on the Talmudic chronological dating for the destruction of the first temple that they say in the Talmud was destroyed around 423 BC. The secular chronologists are dating the destruction of that first temple with the year 586 BC. And that's a common, commonly used year for the destruction of Solomon's temple by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians, 586 BC. But the Talmud, which is an ancient rabbinic commentary, you know, you got you got the Babylonian Talmud, you got the Jerusalem Talmud. 
And the rabbis tell us that the Babylonian Talmud is more accurate than the Jerusalem Talmud. It's more authoritative than the Jerusalem Talmud. And the Babylonian Talmud consists of two books, the Mishnah and the Gemara. The Mishnah was codified by Rabbi Judah the Prince or Rabbi Judah Hanissi in a place called Zippori in the it's on a hill in the Galilee area at around 500 AD. And according to Rabbi Judah Hanissi, also called Judah the Prince, uh, uh, the Jewish law was carried by memory, not the Mosaic law, but they believe that there was a second law given on Mount Sinai, carried by memory throughout all the centuries by the Jews, finally written down by Rabbi Judah Hanissi around 500 AD. And so the Talmudic chronologists date the destruction of the first temple 423 BC, but then the secular chronologists date it 586 BC. Again, there's not a clear answer for the 222-year discrepancy. I know you can Google it and go online, and you're going to get like a thousand different opinions or reasons why the discrepancy on the Jewish lunar calendar, but I just, I just threw just a few of them out there uh, to you. We, we must remember that God is outside of time. It doesn't exist to him. God is not on anyone's time clock. God is not on anybody's timetable system. God is outside of time, okay? For him, it's nothing. And we know that based on Psalm 90, verse 4, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, like it was just yesterday. Peter in 2 Peter 3 8 says, Know this one thing, <coughs> excuse me, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So God is outside of time. To him, a thousand years was just five minutes ago. To him, a thousand years was just yesterday. So God is outside of time. According to the Breaking Israel News website, got, and I wish I was here for this, there's going to be a concert in Jerusalem involving at least 70 nations to praise God on the anniversary of the creation of the world. Now, this is going to take place at the Davidson Archaeological Center adjacent to the Western Wall, known in Hebrew as the Kotel, or the Wailing Wall, in Jerusalem. And it's going to be sponsored by the Nascent Sanhedrin. In conjunction with the Mikdash Temple Education Center in Jerusalem. It's going to take place September 3rd this year, 2018, one day before the Hebrew month Elul, commemorating 5778, 5778 years ago, when God created the world. Man, I'd love to be there for that. A few years ago, I interviewed Rabbi Hillel Weiss. And he is the official spokesperson for the Nascent Sanhedrin. I interviewed him when I was doing my live internet radio show. And we talked for at least an hour and a half. And uh, Rabbi Hillel Weiss is calling on all the races of the world and the nations of the world to join them, the Sanhedrin, the 70 elders, and their elected high priest overseeing the Sanhedrin and future third temple operations, calling upon these nations to participate in the celebration in the holy city of Jerusalem, commemorating the day of creation. Now, according to Rabbi Hillel Weiss, this is what he said, and I quote, the focus of the event is for all of creation, including stars, angels, seraphim, animals, and of all mankind to praise their 
created. And this is the interview that Rabbi Hillel Weiss gave to Breaking Israel News. He went on to say, and I quote, the world, in fact, all of creation is in danger of annihilation due to the current reality of war, technology, and a volatile geo geopolitical situation. Therefore, aside from giving praise and thanksgiving to our Creator, the concert will include a plea for forgiveness and a request from the Creator of the world for a, a beneficial fulfillment of all prophecies at this time. End quote. Well, folks, we know that in the future, according to Bible prophecy, those requests will be answered. And it's not going to be pretty at first. We know based on Bible prophecy, the 70 weeks of prophecy in Daniel, those 70 weeks are based on the Jewish lunar calendar. A final seven-year period of tribulation will come upon Israel and the world, known in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, as a time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Genesis 32, 28. His name was changed from Jacob, the deceiver, to Israel. I will fight for you, God says. Since the Jewish calendar has a 360-day year, and the tribulation period is seven years long, we see, as we do our math here, that 360 times 7 is 2,520. We know that 2,520 days are exactly seven years. And then if we divide the 2,520 by 2, we come up with a number found in Revelation 11.3 and Revelation 12.6. Revelation 11.3, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 1,203 score days, called in sackcloth. 1,000. 260 days. If you take 2,520 divided by 2, you come up with 1,260. And then we read in Revelation 12, 6, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God, that they shall feed her there. 1,203 score days. 1,260 days. Those numbers fit beautifully. They fit accurately into the Jewish lunar calendar because it has everything to do with Israel. It's a time of Jacob's trouble, not the church's trouble. It's a time of Jacob's trouble. This is why the final 70th week of Daniel's prophecy has everything to do with the Jews and not with the church. Again, it's a time of Jacob's trouble, not the church's trouble. These those numbers deal with the Jewish people. I cannot fit Daniel's prophecy into our Gregorian solar calendar that's based on the sun. Our calendar has 365 days. So if I take 365 days times seven years, the seven year period of tribulation, I come up with the number of 2,555. Our Gregorian solar calendar adds 30 days to Daniel's prophecy. It doesn't fit. If I take 2,555 and I divide it by 2, I come up with 1,277. It doesn't fit. Not 1,260, 1,277. Our calendar adds 17 days. It doesn't fit. So again, this is a time of Jacob's trouble, not a time of the church's trouble. The church will be taken out of here before the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy. These numbers deal with the Jewish people and not with the church. Daniel 9.24 says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Who's he talking about? The church? Israel? Is he talking about Jews, Christians? Well, I know he's talking about Jews. He says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. 
Ur Kadosh in Hebrew. Ur Kadosh Yerushalayim, the holy city of Jerusalem. So we know this has everything to do with Israel and nothing to do with the church. Again, the church was not in the 69th week of Daniel's prophecy, that 483 prophetical year based on the Jewish lunar calendar, 173,880 days. The church was not in that period. You can't find the church in that period. I challenge you to do so. And the church will not be in the final 70th week. Why? It's a time of Jacob's trouble. 70 weeks are determined upon thy, holy, thy people, the Jews, and thy holy city, Jerusalem. We cannot, you cannot find the church in the 69th week, and you will not find a church in the 70th week in the future. The book of Revelation itself is proof in the pudding of this. The church is mentioned 25 times in the book of Revelation. She's mentioned 19 times before Revelation 4.2. This is before the tribulation period. And this is before we hear the words, come up hither, which many relate to the rapture. And then the church is mentioned six times after Revelation 19.11. This is after the tribulation period, and this is during the second coming. After the second coming. But in between those 16 chapters in the book of Revelation, that deal with the tribulation period, I challenge a mid-tribber, I challenge a post-tribber, I challenge a free rather to try to find the word church on the earth during the seal judgments, during the trumpet judgments, or during the vial of all judgments. They can't do it. Oh, they'll try to allegorize and spiritualize and, and maybe try to pull a verse here and pull a verse there to try to put the church on the earth in the tribulation period. They can't do it. We're not there. Either God forgot to put us in the tribulation period, or ladies and gentlemen, we simply are not there. Why? Again, I reiterate, repetition is good. Let it sink into the cerebellum of yours. The seven years of tribulation are based on the Jewish lunar calendar. Those numbers deal with the Jews, not the Christian. You can't fit it into, into the Gregorian solar calendar. The plan of God for the church in the future is to call her out at the rapture. Right now, God is using the church as Israel has been temporarily set aside, not done with. God's not finished with Israel. God still has a program for the Jews. But Israel has been temporarily set aside as God is dealing with the ecclesia. Called out ones, us, the church, the bride of Christ. To evangelize the world and share the gospel. And when God is ready, then he will call his bride out of the world at the rapture, and then he will deal with Israel down the road during the final 70th week of Daniel's prophecy. You see, guys, doctrine falls into place. Doctrine appropriately and accurately falls into where it needs to be when we take the scriptures for their plain sense interpretation. When we put Israel in their rightful period and the church in its rightful period, doctrine fits like a hand in a glove. But if you're going to go on YouTube and watch all those nuts out there as a allegorized spirit, I talked about this yesterday on my show. The dangers of allegorization. When you begin to spiritualize and allegorize and fail to apply a grammatical, historical, contextual, and literal interpretation, you're going to get messed up. And you will get messed up. And how? Take the Bible for its plain sense interpretation. Let the Bible interpret the Bible. Let the scriptures interpret the scriptures. 
apply inductive Bible study. And when you do that, when you when you apply inductive Bible study and compare scripture with scripture, doctrine will fit like a hand in the glove. And if Christians can only get that concept down today, you would not have the doctrinal mess that's taking place in the church. And boy, it is a mess. So, hope this lesson was a blessing to you. The blessing of the lesson. I like that. Anyway, when you have an opportunity, you can visit my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. While you're there, sign up for our newsletters. Navigate around our website. Check out my speaking schedule to see if I'll be at a church near you. If you're a pastor of a church and you'd like to have me come to your church, set us for the fall. We'd love to be there. I just got a call from a church in Kentucky yesterday that booked us for November for a four-day prophecy conference. And so that's what we do. I want to teach Bible prophecy accurately to you. I want to teach it responsibly to you because it is so abused in the church today. It can either, prophecy can be a blessing for those who study it responsibly, or it can be a playground for fanatics who allegorize and spiritualize it to death. I want to teach it to you responsibly. And so if you'd like to have me come to your church, Pastor, I'd love to come. Give us the invite. Give us a date. We'd love to come to your church. It can be a one-day or it can be a multi-day conference. I love multi-day conferences. But I only take prophecy conferences where either I'm the only speaker or I'll speak with someone who I know, who I am familiar with, and I know their doctrine. But other than that, I don't take conferences with multiple speakers anymore. I've seen I've seen that as a disaster down the road. I've seen it in the past, and I ain't gonna I ain't gonna do it again. So love to come to your church and preach on prophecy. My wife and I will be in Israel leaving Monday, come this Monday, to evangelize and share the gospel with the Jews and teach Bible prophecy on location. Again, if you can help us out with that, that would be greatly appreciated. Please. Help support this Jewish outreach to the Holy Land. Use the donate button at the bottom of my webpage, todayinbibleprophecy.org, and put whatever amount the Lord lays on your heart. You are having a direct hand in helping us put a Bible in the hands of an Israeli, a complete Hebrew Bible. Uh, this Sunday, I'll be preaching at Adams Square Baptist Church in Worcester, Massachusetts. So if you live anywhere in Worcester, Auburn, or any of those surrounding areas, come on out. As I'll be preaching at Adams Square Baptist Church come this Sunday. And then Monday, headed for the Holy Land. Man, I can't wait. And while you're at my website, visit our store, order my brand new books, order our Holy Land gifts, our Widow My Coins. And, uh, Check out the, uh, the the speaking schedule. See if I'll be at a church near you. Look at our new video. All that stuff is available on our website. My Bible prophecy teaching from Israel with Dr. Baker. I upload these uh, you, uh, Facebook videos to our website as well as to YouTube. Follow me on the social networks. Here on Facebook, my page is public. On YouTube, we have almost 300 videos on YouTube of me teaching from Israel, Rome, Petra in Southern Jordan, and these Facebook videos in general. Go to my Twitter page. Look at all my late breaking news articles on Twitter. August Rosado at Bible underscore prophecy is my Twitter handle. And if you get into LinkedIn, follow me as Evangelist August Rosado on LinkedIn. So those are the social networks you can look us up on. And don't forget, March of 2019, my wife and I will be leading a Bible prophecy tour to Israel. I'd love to have you join us. 11 days in Israel with a one-day excursion there in Petra in southern Jordan. 
If you'd like to join me in Israel in March of 2019, Lord willing, get a hold of me. I'll let you know exactly what you need to do. So make those preparations now. And when it's all said and done, you'll never read that Bible the same way again. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. If you're not saved, based on what Jesus said in John 3, 36, the wrath of God is currently hanging over your head. If that wrath falls on you, you're lost for all of eternity. You're either one heartbeat away from going to hell or one trumpet sound away from being left behind. Repent of your sins today by faith. Call upon the name of the Lord. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Come into your heart to be your Lord and personal Savior. To change and transform your life. Make you a new creation. And if you mean business with him, he will mean business with you. And if you want to know how to do that, I'd love to talk with you. I'd love to open God's word to you. And show you from the Bible that you can know for sure without a shadow of a doubt that one day heaven will be your home. All right, guys, that's all the time we have today. Tomorrow, Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday, Prophecy Q&A. Have those Bible prophecy questions ready for tomorrow morning, and I look forward to seeing you. So remember, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. And Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we'll talk to you tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Prophecy Q&A. God bless, guys. We'll talk to you later.